Some of that Canadian wildfire smoke making it out to Nova Scotia this afternoon. Not really causing any big problems there. It is mostly an elevated layer. And way out there at the bottom right, you can see Tropical Storm Philippe, which is expected to bear down on Puerto Rico. We'll just give you a quick look at that. 45 knots on that storm, 998 millibars. And the track is taking it a little bit further south than we originally were expecting. And there's a quick look at the GFS graphics. There is Philippe. There is what may become Rena. And we can see that Philippe is departing a little bit from the script, kind of drifting south. This is definitely subject to change. The NHC forecast going pretty much due west. Meanwhile, Rena heads to the northwest, but overall it does not look like that will affect the weather in the U.S. itself. We are protected by this big stagnating ridge across the eastern U.S. And with that northerly flow along the Gulf Coast in eastern U.S., that would block the approach of anything coming in from the Atlantic. And there is our surface map this afternoon. It is fall five days in the fall, but we are still hanging on to summer, especially down there in Texas, 90s this afternoon, and 95 at Phoenix. No surprise, as we are all accustomed to false fall. In the northeast, a Canadian ridge pushing south, temperatures in the 60s and 70s, and we are looking for frost advisories in northern New Hampshire, extreme northwestern Maine, Temperatures could be down to 34 in the valleys. Meanwhile, coastal flood advisories from New Jersey down through Delaware and Maine. We're looking for up to two feet of inundation due to heavy tidal flooding. And several days of easterly onshore winds have really piled that water up. And we have an SPC slight risk for the Ohio River Valley today. Focusing on the Louisville and Evansville area right there into the Kentucky bluegrass region. The main risk is for gusty winds and hail, but greater instability will be available close to this warm front, and we could see a few brief supercells in that region. In the southeastern U.S., we have a frontal system and also some cold air damming. You can see that northerly flow in the Carolinas. Temperatures uh, rather cool, 68, 70 degrees, very pleasant weather and it's being blocked by the Appalachians right there and kind of held into place and maintaining the position of this front. That front is a focus for showers and storms. You can see how they're focused right on that frontal boundary and up to the north, isentropic lift, overrunning, keeping conditions broken to overcast from Georgia up to Virginia. In the southern plains, they're under the influence of tropical weather if you take a close look at those dew points, you can see there is a little bit of infiltration of that dry air that's kind of seeped in over the past several days. But plenty of rich moisture from Corpus Christi, Brownsville, on up to the Texas Hill Country, and that supported some showers and storms. And there they are, extending from Jasper, Beaumont, across Houston, San Antonio, and on up towards Ozona. Even a few cells breaking out around Dumas, and Vega. Moving to the southwestern states, a cold front up in the Great Basin area. So conditions out here responding a little bit to the approach of that front. However, still a very warm day. They were looking for 104 at Phoenix and Yuma today and 103 at Tucson. Now these temperatures were at 1 p.m. Central and it is definitely warmed up 102 at Phoenix right now and 101 at Tucson. But relief is on the way. This front will make it down this weekend, and that will take 15 to 20 degrees off of some of these temperatures. In the northwestern U.S., under the influence of that modified Pacific air, we do have a red flag advisory for Wyoming due to very low relative humidities and gusty winds. And for tomorrow, that will expand south into Colorado as a fire weather watch. Heading up north into Alaska, a weak atmospheric river moving into southeastern Alaska. We are going to see that really beef up as we get into Saturday night, rich 
800 to 1,000 IVT values from Juneau to Ketchikan, and that will spread down the coast going into Sunday and Monday. Even down to Vancouver, they will get a chunk of that moisture as well. And El Nino season is certainly ramping up. It is cool up in Alaska, 20s and 30s. They have warmed up just a little bit. Temperatures are 37 at Fairbanks, at the Sour, 40 at Northway, and Anchorage looking at 49. There's a look at the sky near Fairbanks at Esther Dome, a mountaintop communication site. That looks like Nimbostratus and Altostratus. There's the view at Delta Junction, about 70, 80 miles to the southeast. Looks a little bit better this afternoon at Anchorage. And we are starting to see winter up there in the Canadian High Arctic, 18 degrees at Eureka and 10 degrees just north of that. These are the coldest temperatures we've seen so far this season. 25 at Thule and 27 at Resolute. However, along the shores of the Arctic Ocean, cold rain falling with gusty northeast winds. There's a look at it on the sea level pressure and thickness chart. The thickness, 1,000 through 500 millibars, is in red. And this does show a classic northwestern cold front. So I'm going to draw approximately where the Bear Clinic low is. That's going to be in Wyoming. There could be another low further up north. And the front's extending pretty much right like that. So a frontal transition zone across northern Nevada and southeastern Oregon and in Idaho as well. Out to the west, we've got support for a warm front that probably extends somewhat like that and further on south. So based on that, I probably would adjust this chart, maybe bring that warm front to the east and then drop it to the south. So yes, I probably should have looked at this chart before I went and analyzed the surface map. And looks like the Weather Prediction Center had a similar predicament. They kind of continued that front on up from California into Saskatchewan. On the other hand, looking at the jet stream picture, we see that we have a continuous polar front jet from the Gulf of Alaska into Oregon and on up into Saskatchewan and Nunavut. We have this blocking pattern across the Great Lakes and Hudson Bay region, cut off high near James Bay, and some indication of a cutoff low or general troughiness over Michigan. Now this does support the polar front being aligned kind of like that, being all part of the same system. So there probably are two ways to approach this. However, when you start getting into blocky patterns like that, your configurations of your surface systems do depart from the classical models. It's important to point out that the jet does split the main band going up to the north, but we have this other 50 to 60 knot split right there across the Dakotas, and that's probably what our surface systems are paired up with. And as we go into the remainder of the week and into the weekend, continuing that long wave trough on the west coast, some indication of ridging out east, it is being broken up by a couple waves moving through the flow, but you're going to see that ridge rapidly rebuild as the small-scale waves depart. And there it is. There's that ridging building right back up. Meanwhile, high amplitude trough on the west coast, and that's going to be associated with the invasion of some polar air. It will be modified over that warm terrain because we're coming out of summer, but we are going to get this cutoff low and a pretty good bulky piece of cold air across the Great Basin area, California, and the southwestern region. So let's drop back down to the surface and watch it all come together. Going into tomorrow, that's going to be Thursday evening, to analyze this, we stay on the warm side of the gradient. That's this stuff right here. That's going to be the frontal transition zone. We're going to find our fronts on the warm side of that. So that's going to be our Bear Clinic Low. Warm front extending up to the north, probably curving back into Missouri. And the cold front still hanging back up there in Nevada. But as we go into Saturday, you're going to see it move, probably due to the passage of a 
shortwave or medium scale trough. And there it is. Almost missed it, but that's going to be the cold front right there. Significant cold air advection through California. We're already up to Saturday night. That's going to be associated with some rains in the Sierra Nevadas, Reno, Sacramento, San Joaquin Valley. And the highest elevations of the Sierra Nevadas could get snow. Now, Sunday will be an interesting day in the Great Basin region and the southwestern deserts because that cold air will be moving in. This is going to be Sunday afternoon. Rains from Nevada up to Idaho and Montana and the higher elevations of the Great Basin will get some snow from northern Nevada to the Wasatch Range, the Bitterroots, and the Salmon Mountains. Meanwhile, the front itself, that's snuck eastward into the Four Corners area in southeastern Arizona. Afternoon highs in Arizona will be as cold as 58 at Flagstaff and 85 at Phoenix. And in Las Vegas, they're looking for a high of 73 degrees, which is almost like winter. However, going into Monday and Tuesday, there is just not very much eastward movement on this cold air mass. You can see the thermal troughing still sitting across the western U.S., and that means a prolonged period of modification just sitting over the same terrain, and central U.S. is going to miss out. And you can kind of see by the thickness patterns, the upper level flow will align with these red contours, so the jet will be southwesterly, and that will keep the cold air from spreading east, because if we want to bring that cold air into the plains, we really need to see some westerly flow, and we don't really have that. However, on Tuesday and Wednesday, some energy starting to come out into the central plains. Maybe some showers and storms in New Mexico, Texas, and Oklahoma. And then we see a very strong push of cold air. The European model is agreeing with this. However, this is still a week away, but this is a very strong push of cold air coming south. Typically, when we get these, we tend to get some deep troughing out to the west, and we get the southwesterly flow that kind of keeps it from moving south. This trough looks a little bit different because it looks like the trough axis is over the Rockies. And the further east we have that trough axis, the more likely this cold air will come out of Canada into the southern U.S. So this definitely is going to bear close watching. And we can see that at the very end, the 540 decameter line, which is classically associated with snow, is all the way down towards Wichita. Now, it is October, so it's very unlikely that's going to happen, although snow has been observed all the way down to the panhandles in October. It's not saying that's what's going to happen, but this signifies the amount of cold air the models are trying to bring south. And as far as tropical cyclones, let's take a look at the Atlantic. This is the detrimental effects chart. The blue and purple, that's going to be high shear. The brown is going to be dry air in the mid-levels. And we've got problems with both. About the only favorable area is around Belize down to Costa Rica and Honduras. We can see that the North American coastline is being more and more affected by the strong shear as we get the strong westerlies moving across the U.S. and the invasion of polar air masses as well. And moving forward, we've also got Saharan air layer problems across parts of the Caribbean. I'm not too sure how much that's going to affect these systems right here. Haven't really looked at the details in depth, but we can see significant shear problems across the western Atlantic and parts of the Cape Verde region. So it's going to be a struggle to get any tropical cyclones going. That's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. Just as a note, the credits have been updated. I've removed a few people who have dropped off the radar and are no longer supporting us, and I've added a few that we've overlooked. And for those of you who sent YouTube Super Chat donations, rest assured I greatly appreciate that, and I'll be glad to put you on the credits for a few months. Just email me to remind me as I don't have a running list of Super Chat donors. I'm going to leave you with some footage taken by Greg out there in the Texas Hill Country last night. 
If you enjoy it, please say hello to Greg and let him know. I think you'll appreciate that. All right, so we'll see you back here again on Friday. Take care and have a good one. Bye-bye.